Hi, it's Terry Gaines. I'm going to give you some assembly tips on creating this cute little box. It has a tulip that slides down and opens up, and inside there are three little note cards with a tulip images on them. It's a perfect size to put candy or small gifts in. Just close it back up, and the tulip will slide up to close the box. It is a fun and easy project to make. You need two pieces of cardstock. The first one is three and a quarter by 10 and a quarter. This piece is scored at three and a quarter, at four and three eighths, at six and one half, at seven and three quarters, and at eight and seven eighths. The next piece of cardstock you need is five and a quarter by seven and one half. This one is scored at three and a quarter, at four and a quarter along the seven and a half inch edge. Along the five and a quarter inch edge, it is scored at one inch, oops, at, and then at four and one quarter. Also along this edge at two and five eighths, I'm gonna make a quarter inch score line. And that's going to be a mark. Get that out of the way. The Simply scoring tool works perfect for that. That is going to be a mark for where the little half circle is punched out with the two inch circle punch. So I'm gonna bring a two inch circle punch in here, center it, and just punch out a little edge. That's going to just give us a little bit of an opening to get the note cards out. Then what I need to do is make some cuts here. So I'm going to cut in straight on these one inch sides, straight into the intersection. And then I'm also going to take a little sliver of material, cardstock out of the center tab. I'm going to do that on both sides of this cardstock or both ends. Go straight in and then the little sliver is from the inside or the middle panel. Then what I'm going to do is take a bone folder and crease all of these edges to get them um, shaped for the box. So we're gonna crease them all inward and along the one inch side, along with these. So we're gonna just shape all of these like so. Then what I'm going to do is apply tear and tape. That's the strongest adhesive we have. And that is going to work great for boxes. I'm going to apply it on this tab, this tab, this one, and this one. And to save some time for the video, I've done this ahead of time. So this is tear and tape, and it's got some backing on it. I'll keep the backing on there until I'm ready to assemble the box. Before I assemble it, I'm gonna flip it over, and in the, the panel without the half circle, I am going to apply some Parabasaz cardstock. This cardstock is going to be what we see through this opening. So that's gonna go in the center panel, equally centered here and top and bottom, and apply it like so. Then I'm ready to shape the box. I'm going to remove the backing using the Take Your Pick tool and just remove the backing of the tear and tape. And as I may, may not have mentioned, applying pressure and friction helps loosen the backing and just be sure it's adhered down well. And the little tool here helps remove all of this. I purposely do, don't put my tear and tape right up to the fold when I'm making projects because that allows me to have my cardstock meet up to the fold and not get stuck on the not adhered to the tear and tape. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring these two tabs in and bring them down to, to the center panel. And these little center tabs are gonna go on the outside. The reason I have them on the outside, if I left them on the inside, the note cards and envelopes would get caught on them. But by sandwich them, sandwiching them between the side panels, then they don't get adhered to anything. And then wrap that like so, and that one like so. And there we have the box. The next piece of cardstock, and we've already scored this, is for wrapping around the, a little bit of a mess here, around 
the box for the flap. Before I go any further with this, I'm going to add some texture to it. I use the subtle folder all the time and it adds a great texture. I'm not sure if it shows on the camera, but this bottom panel has a texture. So what I did was I placed this in the folder, just right up to that fold line, ran it through, and it texturized that portion of the cardstock. Then the other one, two, three, four panels on the other end, I put in the tuft folder and right up to that score line, ran that through, and just like the cooking shows, here we have that already done. So now I can crease all of these score lines with the bone folder. And these were, um, this was the first piece of cardstock that I scored. And all of these dimensions will be on my blog post. If you found the video via YouTube, there'll be a direct link right to the blog post. And you can download a tutorial which will have the graphics on, on this also. So the next thing I need to do is make the slits for the slider. That is done with a classic label punch and it is, the cardstock is placed in here. I like working with them upside down so I can visually see the, the opening for the punch. I'm going to rest it all the way to the cardstock and use my finger to feel the edge of the cardstock there and punch that out. Then I'm going to fold this on that first score line, make it flush to the punch, keeping it resting to the bottom, and cut out that little extra piece, right like so. Then I'm going to keep it in here, go all the way to the other end, make that last score line wrap around the punch, let it rest to the bottom, and punch that out. By resting it to the bottom, my alignment is the same from here to here, so my punch lines up like so. The adhesive for this, is only on the back panel and then dimensionals on the front. So I'm going to take the tear and tape and apply two strips in the third panel. I purposely leave the second one with no adhesive. So this one gets tear and tape and this one gets dimensionals. Dimensionals are going to give it a little bit of a space a little spacer for it. The other tip that I need to tell you is approximately halfway between this edge and this edge is where you're going to place your dimensionals. We don't want them too close to this classic label opening because we have a slider that's going to be um, going back and forth and we don't want the dimensionals to get caught on that. So I'm going to leave that spacing and we'll just put these like so. And this is the little slider. So this one inch circle is gonna go back and forth here, so we don't want it to hit any dimensionals. So my first box that I created, and there'll be a direct link to the blog post, was this one with a little heart. You can see my heart kind of rotates a little bit. One of my viewers of my video or my blog post commented, um, Linda Snyder, and said, how about if you put two dimensionals instead of one so that image doesn't rotate and that's perfect so that's what i'm going to do is put them i said next to each other but they're really on top of each other and place this in here these dimensionals need to be coming from the front and if you rotate it just a little bit it'll stay in place and i'm kind of jumping ahead i should have adhered this first what i'm going to do is adhere this panel first take the backing off the tear and tape. And as I mentioned, I purposely did not put adhesive down here. That allows me to place my box down, let it get in the right position, and I need it to go right up to the fold. I'm using my fingers to make sure it's flush, and even here, right up to the fold, and adhere that to the back. Now, since this piece is in place, I can take the dimensional backings off and adhere this panel to the front of the box. And this is going to give us a little bit of space so your slider doesn't um, get sandwiched too tightly and won't move up and down. So let's get this off. 
lots of backing pieces from dimensionals. So again, make this flush in the bottom and it should wrap right to the front. And there we go. And that, make sure that slides up and down, works out perfect. So this, this tulip, you can see my first one twist because I only have one dimensional on here and two of them will work out perfect. So how did I create this little tulip image? I actually cut it out of the designer series paper that's called Pleased, Pleased as Punch. It's the new coordination product in the, um, for Stampin' Up. And what I'm going to do is actually just go in here and cut out the daffodil tulip. So there's other colors here. So my next box needs to be a coral or it could be the Highland Heather. There's Petal Pink or Blushing Bride. So what I did was I cut this out and now what I need is a post-it note so I can reach in to attach it or attach the post-it note. So I can reach in with the tulip punch and punch this image out. So then I can place it in here. The post-it note becomes a handle. I kind of squeeze this a little bit here and get an even image and punch that out. Then what happens is you want to remove that post-it note that's on the back. I added some depth and dimension to my tulip. The, re the way I did that was I took some scrap cardstock and punched out the tulip. I took the leaf portion or the petal, placed it right on my cutout image, and then I took the dark so saffron blending pen. Oh, I got lots of little backings here. Then what I did is I took the writing tip and I went from end of inked area or printed area, rotated this, placed it on the other side, went from this edge to this edge. And before I picked, or before I take off, sorry, I told you I had bloopers in my videos. I kept this piece of white cardstock on here to allow me to take the brush tip and color in this opening. Now this is going to dry softer color and um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and color this all in. As I mentioned, this is the Dark So Saffron and it worked out good for this color. And then I'm gonna just take that tip end and just add some streaks here just to give it a little bit more dimension like so. To get the green part for the greenery, what I did was I took the edges of this paper, the ones that don't have a full tulip image, and just trim this off. And then when I trim this off, I can use that and the punch to get these images. So the tip that you have to remember is you're going to punch one on the back side of the paper, and then you're going to rotate this and punch the other one on the right side, the right the pear pizzazz side. That way you get both of those. And then because this is just designer series paperweight. I want this to be adhered to my cardstock that I punched out to give it more stability. What I did do to save, um, not to save, but I ran this through my little Xyron machine so I could have adhesive on um, the whole piece. And I'm going to layer this tulip right onto this Whisper White, now I have stability for that. And then also, when I run these through, I can take and place one on this side and one on this side. You can also use different other different adhesives. So that adheres the leaf portion down. What I am gonna do is cam camouflage that little intersection with some Baker's Twine. I'm gonna take and tie a bow I like to leave my ribbon and my twine right on the spool and then make my bow or my knot. I feel that I waste less if I do that. 
Then I'm going to take a mini glue dot and place this knot right on the mini glue dot. The knot is bigger than the mini glue dot, so what I do is I squish the mini glue dot so it is underneath the knot and so I don't have any exposed mini glue dot. Attach that, bring this all the way to the bottom, take the backings off. Now the tip on this is when you close this, your tulip needs to be underneath this flap and then centered right like so. That way when it's underneath the flap, it allows you to slide it up above the flap. And that's how this little box was made. I hope you enjoyed um, this project. If you found me via YouTube, look in the comments section for a direct link, link to my blog post where you'll find the supply list, measurements, and instructions. There'll be a PDF tutorial you can download and a direct link to my Stampin' Up! store for the supplies. I would love to have you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click the red box under the video. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed creating this project with me.